do you think the players Troy Weaver has put together fit? So now, can I I should give people a little context. Jim Costa, I think he's on 97 one. I'm not really sure. I remember listening to him when he was on ESPN in Grand Rapids, but he said Troy has been obsessed with non-shooting bigs and just drafted a, another poor shooter. My biggest issue with Troy is he's not building a team. I don't agree with that. Sure, you have a bunch of top five picks on the roster, but they don't fit together. When you hear that tweet, though, does that sound like a guy that watches the Pistons? And I'm not – go go ahead. It sounds like a guy that's ill-informed, that doesn't pay attention, but why would he? Yeah. That's okay. my point. Like, the Pistons just won 17 games. 97-1 isn't the most reliable, I, I should say, network radio station – in terms of, you know, Detroit Pistons consumption. I'd like to think that, you know, us and other Pistons podcasts that do this on a weekly or even a daily basis are more on the know of, like, what this team is building. Um, his tweet kind of – because I quote tweeted. I said it's not a finished product yet. Not all the pieces fit because it's not it's not complete. Yeah, you have four bigs. The only big that can shoot is Isaiah Stewart. Yeah, there are players on this roster, like – Maybe he was talking about Hamadou Diallo that can't shoot. Talking about Sar Thompson that is – it's not a knockdown shooter, but there were, there was progress this year in OTE. Um, I just think his tweet was more of the fact that they wanted Whitmore. Everyone at that network – or I should say network. Radio station wanted Whitmore, and we didn't get him. And I think that's more of the fact that they wanted him, and we took a Sar. I think it was just kind of – I don't know. I don't want to say bitter, but – up maybe upset. Yeah. I mean, when I read it first, I basically just said, I quote tweeted it too, saying there's going to be growing pains, but this core is going to be special. They're going to do some special things in the NBA. My thing is you can, these guys go into such great detail about like a lion's losing season or a tiger's losing season or a red wings losing season, but pay no mind to when the Pistons have a losing season. I get it. 17 wins was hard to watch. I watched almost every game of the Pistons last year, just like you did, just like so many other fans did. It was hard. I get it. But if you're going to talk about them, and you're more importantly, if you're going to get paid to talk about them, you should be a little bit more informed. That's it. Like whether you're take it, take information from a podcast or you read some articles that are out there, whether it's from James Edwards or Omari or Mike Curtis, like they all give good information out there. You know, you can even go read Detroit Bad Boys and you'll get some good information. You'll be more informed. I felt like this was just a bad tweet from a guy that has not paid attention, and that's it. And I have to disagree with him. There's just going to be growing pains with this team. But you have a great playmaker in Cade Cunningham that is patient, sees the floor differently. He's been compared to Chris Paul, and that's something to love. You got Jaden Ivey who can attack the rim and put pressure on the defense, can also kick it out. He has a little bit of vision. Then you just drafted a guy that – you know, yeah, maybe the shooting's not there yet, but it has grown, just like you were saying, from 22% to start the season to 33% to 38% in the playoffs from three. And he's a, from what I, everything I've heard and read, he's just a guy that's a gym rat. He wants to be in the gym. He wants to work on his game. He wants to be great. What is wrong with that? And then you got Jalen Duran, who Monty Williams said, like you said earlier, could be a top 10 player. Guys like Paul George have compared him to Paul, to Dwight Howard. Like, it may not the, – maybe the picture isn't clear to guys, but for Pistons fans that have watched this team, the vision is clear. We're starting to see the puzzle come together. And, you know, I would rather have guys getting clean looks from the three-point line than guys that just jack up three-pointers. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he said something about the Denver Nuggets in another tweet where it's like, dude, the Denver Nuggets weren't taking the most threes during the regular season. They were just taking quality three-pointers because they had – a great playmaker in Yoke. They had another playmaker in Jamal Murray getting those looks for their teammates. That's what the Pistons have. Now it's up to them just to knock down those shots. But as we saw, wasn't it like two years ago, Cade's rookie season where the Pistons had, they were like top five for most open three pointers. They just weren't hitting them. Wasn't there a stat like that? I could be yeah. wrong, but that's the power of a Cade Cunningham. That's what he's going to do for your team. And you know, with the improvement that guys like Isaiah Stewart, guys like Jaden Ivey, we all know he's going to take a step. Guys like Marcus Sasser coming in to do catch and shoot. Isaiah Livers, if he can stay healthy. Bojan, this team is going to be much better shooting from the three-point line if that's all you want. They're going to be better, and I think the fit works. 
Yeah, I think my biggest problem with that tweet was the lack of context, like you said. 97-1 does a phenomenal job covering the Lions and giving you context, giving you news, giving you stories. I've listened to not just – this isn't a, like a shot at Jim Costa. I've heard people like Rico Beard, Mike Filani wanting to trade for Ben Simmons. And then the same breath saying, we don't have a war chest. We don't have draft picks. What are we doing? We don't have a star. But they ignore the fact that when the Pistons started the rebuild, their only trade ship was Andre Drummond. And that got you a bag of peanuts. We all know that. <laughs> Rebuilds are going to take time when you don't have tradable assets. Yep. And Troy, basically, you know, his first year here, he traded Luke Kennard so he could get a Sadiq Bay that turned into James Wiseman. He traded Christian Wood to Houston so he could get Isaiah Stewart. He drafted Killian Hayes. You know, the next year he gets Kate Cunningham and Isaiah Livers. Uh, last year he gets Jade Nivey and Jalen Duran, and he drafts Persida. This year he gets Asar Thompson and Marcus Asser. He's building. It's going to take a little bit of time, and that's completely okay. I think when we look three, four years down the line and we're in the playoffs, I think everyone's per- perception of how this rebuild went and it, maybe it took five years to get there. I think more fans will say, well, well you know what? We're set up for long-term success now. We're going to be in the playoffs each and every year. It's not going to be built in a day. Like I've said, we're putting pieces together and the puzzle isn't complete yet. So for you to say, you know, Troy Weaver's just collecting players that don't fit. He's not really building a team. I just disagree with that. I, I think he's trying to build a team. He's just trying to f- make sure all these pieces fit together so we can start competing. Oh, 100%. And yeah, again, not trying to, I liked Jim Costa when he was at ESPN. And I mean, I got no ill towards him. It just seemed he was just uninformed. You know, I mean, that's ill informed, I guess, you know, misinformed. It was just, that's all it was. And again, if you're going to put a tweet out like that, you, you should expect to get a little fire back. Um, again, I love what Troy has done. Maybe some of the times it has been a little confusing for sure. But when you look at the core of this team right now, Cade, Jaden Ivey, Asar, um, Jalen Duran, Isaiah Stewart. Those are five quality players that any team in the NBA, every NBA fan base would love to have those guys on their team. And if they tell you they want it, they're lying. And that's what Troy Weaver has put together. And you can't say the fit doesn't work when you haven't seen it all on the floor together. You have to see all of these guys play before you make that assumption. Let's all see how it plays out first before we throw Troy to the fire and all that. Before we say he did a bad job and he's not putting the team together. I have seen – it's – I don't even – I've seen teams just draft players where it's like it doesn't make any sense year after year after year. But with Troy Weaver, now that we've had a few years under him, you like we've been saying, like you start to see the vision. You start to see the, piz, the puzzle. The picture becomes a little bit more clear. It's just – that's what bothered me just a little bit. I just – it bothered me. That's all I'll say about it. I've told you before, I'm numb to people like that that have opinions. Like, you're, you're right to have an opinion. I'm not going to say that he's wrong or right. I do think he is right in the aspect where if you look at it from a you know outside perspective, it kind of looks like, why did he just trade for James Wiseman when you have Jalen Duran? Like, doesn't make sense. We've talked about it. But he's collecting talent. He's seeing what works. Like if James Wiseman turns out to be a bust, we're not losing sleep over it because Sadiq Bey wants to get paid. And we're not paying him $20 million. I, I think what Troy has done since he's gotten here is he's tried to collect talent. Now, has he missed on like these, you know, project players? 100%. None of them have really worked out outside of Hamadou Diallo. Like every other player – that he's tried to trade for. Josh Jackson had a little bit of a run here. Dennis Smith Jr. didn't really do anything here, but now he's a good player for the Hornets. Like, yep. like Jahil Okafor. I mean, I could go down the list. Like, he's taken, you know, swings at these, you know, high draft picks, but that hasn't worked out. But he he's trying to collect talent, and I can't fault the GM for doing that. Now, are there draft picks that I don't agree with? 100%. I've, I've talked about the Killian draft pick. I think that's probably the only stain so far as a GM when evaluating talent that it just didn't work out. Um, He swung for the fences and like he said, he'll, he'll swing. He'll take that swing. If if a guy can pan out and reach his potential, 
then you're looking like the smartest guy in the room. But hey, he he struck out. That's that's a hundred percent okay. Not every GM is gonna bat a hundred percent. Show me a GM that is bad at a hundred percent. I'd love to see it. Yeah, and you know, just to touch on the James Wiseman thing, who wouldn't take an opportunity or an you know, to get a guy that's a former number two overall pick that was highly regarded coming out of college, highly regarded coming out of high school. You know, a guy that's seven foot one that could run the floor like that. Why not take a chance? You knew Sadiq Bay. There's a good chance you weren't going to sign him for what he wanted. There was a chance that he'd probably end up walking at some point. So try to get something for him. I understand some people hated that trade, and that's fine. But you have to take those chances. You have to gamble, especially when you're a 17 win season. You know, I mean, just throw as many darts as you can at the board and see what sticks. You know, that's that's all that's all Troy Weaver was trying to do. And again, I think when it comes to drafting, he has put together a solid core.